Niger state government raises alarm that Boko Haram has uh, taken over some communities in its jurisdiction. And having in mind the various attacks that have taken place in the last few days, should a state of emergency be declared in Nigeria? This is Plus Politics, and I am Osao Gye Ogbon. Welcome once again to PLOS Politics. The Niger state government has raised alarms that Boko Haram has hoisted its flags in Kauri and Shiroro local government areas of the state. Governor Abubakar Sanibelo, while confirming this, also said over 3,000 residents of the affected communities have been displaced by the terrorist. Mr. Bello further said that he had earlier alerted the federal government, but the government has not been proactive. Joining us to discuss this is Ambassador Roy Ohidevie, a military veteran, and also Al Zubai Abubakar, a legal practitioner. Thank you both for joining us on PLOS Politics. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a pleasure. All right. I'm going to start with Ambassador Roy. Uh, you're, of course, you have a lot of experience uh, in uh, um, uh, the military space. Um, what's the significance of hoisting a flag? If you remember... 2014, 2015, uh, there was conversations of Boko Haram uh, being in control of numerous local government areas in northeast Nigeria. And then late in 2016, the chief of army staff back then, uh, Buratai, uh, had uh, presented a flag to President Muhammad Buhari, uh, signifying you know, that they probably had defeated Boko Haram. So let's start with, tell us the significance of hoisting a flag in Shiroro. What does that mean? Well, um, you know, globally, a flag is a sign of supremacy. It's a symbol of supremacy. So every country has these types of flags and um, is designated to connote certain specific um, values that the country stands for. So when you see people hoisting flags, or putting on like a beret, it shows that you are taking over supremacy of a certain space that is designated to that authority. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'll let you go on before we bring in uh, Mr. Bubaka. Um, but so, the Roy, so, so how worrisome um, can we describe this if we say that an insurgent group has hoisted its flag in a place as significant as Shiroro in Niger State? Well, in the first place, let's even forget about Shiroro, because people don't recognize our national um, artifacts. Especially, you can look and look at the um, the desert, the forests, all the museums in Nigeria are abandoned. Now, Shiroro is supposed to be like a tourist center, a place of value for the country. So let me even look at the presence of former President Babangida in that, in that state. Do you know that before the hillside building was built for the president, do you know how much of surveillance, Reiki, reconnaissance that was taking place to secure the whole of the Niger state? Because that was where he was coming to. And recall, that those days there was so I'm much like coup d'etat and counter coup. So definitely they must have scanned that area. They must have had a blueprint to be able to lock it down in case of any kind of incursion. So what happened? Is it because the man is now old? Where are the people of the state? That state is predominantly exposed. So that's why it should be protected. All right. Um, now let's bring in Al Zubai Abubakar, uh, a legal practitioner, and I'm sure you also have a lot of experience with some of this. Um, quickly, also share with us, you know, uh, why this should be a a, a national uh, um, headache for Nigeria, seeing that an insurgent group that we 
claimed to have technically defeated, we, of course, uh, somehow even celebrated when their flag was presented to President Muhammad Buhari late 2016, has somehow gotten that level of audacity to hoist a flag in, a, in Niger State? Uh, first, first of all, I, I agree with the statement made, made by my colleague. Uh, the point is, the entire system of the federal government in Nigeria, especially the pretense shown by the ATC in 2016 when they came to power, you know they wrote to power on the basis of pretense on the basis of the fact that they are going to bring change, on the basis that the President Goodluck Jonathan government was a failure, on the pretense that when they come, they will change everything positively in Nigeria. But all, this, all those things are pretenses. They are lies. And time, time has shown that all the things they promised are not true. Even the drama wherein the flag of the Boko Haram was handed over to President Muhammad Buhari was just a pretense. That is why you see the resurgence of the bandits, of the kidnappers, of the headers, of the Boko Haram all over the place. And it appears that it is getting worse every day. Right from Borno, through Yobi, Adamawa, Kaduna, Kasuna, Niger, Nasarawa, and now Benway, all these states since 2015 have witnessed only escalation of violence in one name or the other. And the federal government is not even serious about tackling most of these issues. Take the issues in the South. The South was calm. The South was peaceful. But today, agitations by ethnic groups by people who feel short-term, by the nepotic uh, posture of this government. There are now agitations that are even becoming violent. But take the note, for example. Let me cite just two examples for you. In the Kasuna Axis, when you take off from Maraban Kankara, through to Kankara town, to Dam Musa, to, to Dusimma, to Basari, to Safana, all these places are not safe. I can assure you that over 100 villages have been sacked, and they are not living there. In Kaduna State, right from Chukun, through Kaduna South, through Kaduna North, Igabi local government, Birningwari, and now Zaria, all these places are unsafe. And the escalation of violence is going on and is increasing, and government just stands at Chimbo and is not doing anything about it. So you see, that was a pretense. That Boko Haram flag given to President Muhammad Buhari was just a pretense to show that the change has come. But change is in backward reverse. Because right. we, move, we move backwards twice and move forward only a half. And that is why Nigeria is unsafe today. If you read the newspapers today, you will imagine or think that Nigeria is at war with, with itself. In Niger State, the governor has declared that 50 villages are under today the control of the Boko Haram. So what kind of system are we running? What kind of country are we ruling? What, what kind of legacy does the president and all these governors, especially northern governors, want to leave to the people? It is a complete mess. And right. people are dying every day. All right, hold on, Mr. Bubaka. The thing is that most of these terrorists even communicate with the government. They tell them what to do, but the government cannot do anything. All right, hold so on, all hold on. Um, I Ms. believe are pretenses. Yeah. There, are, there are no truth in it. They are just deceiving the people. All right, hold on, Mr. Abubakar. Um, um, Roy Okidev here. I'm going back to you now. Um, from a military perspective, um, where do you think that we got it wrong? You know, and, and do you agree that you know, giving a flag to President Muhammadu Buhari in late 2016 was all just pretense. Um, if we supposedly had gotten, you know, victory back then, at what point did we take our foot off the pedal and let it get to this point that we're currently no, dealing no. with? No, no. 
Okay, so let, let me come from the area of negotiating with terrorists, negotiating with bandits. Let me come from the area of the deradicalization process. Do you remember? When Absolutely. we were doing the radiation, we, we put a lot of them in affluence, give them chicken and everything. And the soldiers that were dying, we had seen this. And we were hearing stories that they want to be recycled into our military. You remember? Yes, now, please. in those periods, we now started to see bandits. Because so many of the repentant Boko Haram had and be broken out because when they had their internal crisis, some generals broke out and took their men and started banditry. Then recall, it's just a circle, it's a vicious circle. Recall when Gulmi came and they started to negotiate with them. Did you hear anything about um, Boko Haram? No. The Boko Haram kept quiet. Because they were giving money for the bandits, negotiating for ransom, for catchment of people that were kidnapped. So now that you see that every other thing, the, the service chiefs have changed hands, and the military is trying to strategize to dissuade the settlement scheme. Now the Boko Haram is coming up. It's just one and the same thing. So I want to look at it from that perspective. Remember in Niger State, a lot of bandits gave back their weapons to the governor. You remember? Now the same bandits, there was a fracas between the ones that have not repented and the ones that were said to have repented. They came into a village that they were looking for one of those that repented. And you can imagine that audacity, claiming states, brandishing weapons in a, in a sovereign country like Nigeria, in a state where a former president resides. It's disheartening. Um. Mr. Abubakar, um, please kindly confirm for us what state you are from. Hello? Yes, go ahead. I, I want us to confirm what state you are from. The, the, the present condition? No, your state. What state are you from? Okay, I, 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 I'm, I reside in Kaduna State. Okay, but where are you from? Are you from Kaduna State? Kaduna State. Oh, you're from Katsina. Okay, so I, yeah. I, I want you to help us paint a picture of what residents in these areas um, are living like. I, what type of fear are they living in? Because a, a couple of days ago, I saw a video, a short video of a bandit or a, a terrorist, I'm not sure who he was, simply walking along the streets in one of the northern states with his weapon. And the person who recorded the video was, you know, basically saying, look at one of them walking, you know, past us. So it feels like there's a freedom that these people have to simply roam around those areas without, be, without the fear of being arrested or being, um, uh, being killed by our security agents. So give us an idea of what people in Katsina, people in Niger, people in Borno State, what type of fear are they living in currently, seeing that these communities are surrounded and taken over by insurgents? Unfortunately, since 2015, on government spaces, in Nigeria, especially in northern Nigeria, has become widened. For example, in Katsina State, uh, if, if, if you are traveling to Katsina Town, between Maraba and Kankara, you go to Kankara Town, then to Entumaki, which is in Tambusa, local government, then to Dusimma, then Safana, then Basari, and Kurfi. At a point, most of the villagers in this local government had fled to Katsina town. At a point, the area of Katsina had to visit most of these ungoverned places to see whether he can persuade these villagers to go back to their villages. But it was impossible. In Faskari, there was a time that if you go to the filling station, to take fuel, you see headsmen or bandits with their guns wrapped on their shoulders, and they will be moving freely. Sometimes, if they see that you are a man of wealth, they even stop you and ask for money. 
if you are unable to give them, they deal with you. In Faskari town, they come to filling station with their motorcycle and take fuel without paying. They will be brandishing their weapons. The same thing in Amusa. In fact, one of the tragedies in Katsuna State is that one of the leading villages, himself a Fulani, in fact, he holds the title of searching Fulani in Dangaon Katsuna. He was murdered by the bandits. In, in, in Tammusa and in Basari, at a point, the village head had to relocate to Katsuna. So the entire state remained on government. As at last week, in Kankara local government, you see trucks of vehicles parking people that are regarded as, as IDPs coming into Kaduna State, specifically Zaria and Puntua areas. It is very, very unfortunate. If you come down to Kaduna State, especially Birmingwari, Birmingwari was an economically viable area, not only in Kaduna State, but in Nigeria. In fact, it is the leading route to Lagos. Most of the cows transported to the south, especially from the northwest, passed through Birningwari. Birningwari was strategic to the economy of Nigeria. But today, Birningwari is a ghost of itself. If you are asked to travel to Birningwari from Kaduna, you cannot do it. Because hardly does a car pass without being attacked by the bandits. Not only in Birmingwari town, but in places like Buruku and other villages. Right. If you come close to Kaduna town, which is Igabi local government, in fact, the closest village to Kaduna town to its, in Igabi is Rigatikung. There was complete raiding of that village at a point. Then in places like Birmingheru, you cannot even leave. The villagers have left, but the government did nothing about this thing. All People right. are dying every day. People right, are um, fleeing their villages. Mr. Yes, yes. All right, uh, because of time, um, I think you've painted a very, very um, a good picture of what it really looks like in those parts of Nigeria. Um, for people who haven't visited, who can't visit, who haven't been there in their lives, um, we, we live a totally different life, you know, here in Lagos and in other parts of the country. Um, but it's, it's really heartbreaking hearing what they have to deal with and the fear that they live in. Ambassador Roy, um, do you think that we can still win this war? Well, um, let, me, let me first say that we are very, very embarrassed. When I say we, I'm talking about those that have served in Nigerian security agencies. In the years when agencies had the glory that it should have. I remember in those days when we were in the army, we didn't even need to use so much force because there was no human rights violation. Once people see the soldiers coming, they behave themselves. But what is happening now is complicit of leaders. The leaders themselves, they need to take a stand. Nigeria needs a messiah right now. We need someone that will begin to apply penalties. We need someone that is begin to disconnect all the connections that keep these people in audacity. We need someone that will look into financial crime. And we need someone that will give boldness back to the police. Boldness back to the military, boldness to the immigration, so that they can take the spaces. Because the, the, the kind of blackmail that is going on in the police, in the army, in the navy, air force, is too much. Where you see an air force pilot who go and bomb his fellow Nigerian military, where you will see people on convoy for a patrol and they will be ambushed on the road. Do you think their morale remains the same? Don't you know that the Nigerian police I know can contain these people, not even the military, because they are afraid. They are afraid to catch the criminals, and the criminals themselves will be walking the streets again tomorrow, attacking them. So many people have been maimed. The same terrorists will be caught, and you say you are de-radicalizing him. So we need a messiah. 
We need someone that will take up the wheat and flog all the irregularities. We need someone that will take up the wheat and look into the judiciary, look into the, the Senate, the legislature, the corrupt party big whips. Whether they are in APC or PDP, they are corrupt and they are trying to maintain that immunity by staying in power and abusing our opportunities for peace and economy. Um, final question to Al Zubay Abubakar. You're from Katsina State, currently residing in uh, Kaduna. Um, uh, one question that I've seen a lot is, uh, you know, is uh, based on the reaction of Northerners to uh, what you know their regions uh, and their part of the country has suffered in the last couple of years. Uh, do you think that they in, are in any way disappointed in the current Nigerian government? Of course. Nobody is happy today. You need to see the moral of people here. You know, the, it, under the constitution of Nigeria, the primary duties of government is the protection of life, integrity, and property of citizens. If the government fails in this duty, then there's no need for such a government to continue to exist. And the people here are dumping in their spirit are dumping in their moral, and they are dejected. They are despondent. They don't know what to do. And life is brutish. Life is nasty. Life is short. Life is primitive, just as Thomas Hobbes painted it. Unfortunately, the politicians do not look at these issues this way because they are comfortable. Because they are comfortable, they pretend that everything is going well. Despite the fact that the social conditions, the economic conditions, the political situation, the cultural nature of living of the people is completely eroded. And people are living as if they are no longer human beings. Life means nothing to the people. In the north today, most of the people are not happy. But you see, there's one problem with majority of the ordinary people. Most ordinary people look at issues either from the prison of religion or from the prison of region or from the prison of tribe or from the prison of how much money that a politician can give them or the supremacy of their political party. And all these things are irrelevant as far as the life of the citizen is concerned. Absolutely. And that is why we continue to tell people here that if by chance, those of us that will be here in 2023, let's only vote for those people who are credible. People whom we believe can change our fortune. I have said it many times, that whether President Muhammad Buhari builds railways from the Atlantic Ocean to Chad and cross it from Kwara State to, to, to Adama State, it means nothing to us so long as our lives and properties are not protected. All right. So Northerners are not happy. We are not happy with what is happening. And we want a genuine change that can bring happiness and prosperity to our people. All right. Thank you very much. Al Zubay Abubakar, a legal practitioner, thank you so much for speaking with us this evening. I truly appreciate it. And uh, Ambassador yes. Roy Okidevi, a military veteran, thank you also for your time and for thank expressing you yourself on the program thank this evening. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we'll go for a short break. When we return, the declaration of a state of emergency is called for by the House of Representatives. We'll be right back.